Yellowstone, home of Mammoth Hot Springs, steaming vents, bubbling mud pits, boiling springs, and of course, geysers. trip started traveling the rolling farm hills in southwest Wisconsin along Highway 11. We crossed the mighty Mississippi River on US 151 into Dubuque, Iowa. We passed by the Hotel Julian. Famous guests who stayed there included Abraham Lincoln, Al Capone, and Sylvester Stallone. We turned on US 20 on west on our way to Sioux City, Iowa, Walmart for the night. Early the next morning, we continue on US 20 west, crossing the Missouri River into Nebraska. From here on out on 20, we'll be on Two Lane Road. Passed through the rolling hills on eastern Nebraska with corn as far as the eye can see. In Valentine, we met a gentleman who saw a few cars from this year's Pinto Stampede. Three of them come through Rat City in our spot. It must have been two or three weeks ago. Boy, they were sharp looking, and I like the looks of them. You don't see many Pintos on the road anymore. Well, in Valentine, US 20 becomes the Bridges to Buttes Byway. The highway travels through the rolling sand hills of northwestern Nebraska. Rest areas along the highway consisted of a shade tree and a dumpster. Near Chadron, we passed through the Nebraska National Forest. We crossed the border into Wyoming and headed to Douglas, Wyoming to, in Riverside Park. It offers free overnight camping, including showers. In the morning, Donna wanted to take the scenic route to Aries Natural Bridge Park. I was okay with that until she told me to turn right down this path with the no trespassing sign. This is much better. Past the gate, the road is a little narrow in spots, but if you take your time, you'll be able to get down there with no problem with an RV. It is only one of three natural bridges in the U.S. with water underneath it. Park is a nice, cool, green oasis and well worth the trip when traveling along the interstate. In Casper, we stopped at the National Historic Trails Interpretive Center and learned more about the trails from the westward migration. Oh, the alarm of attack was given. The guard fired the gun and called for help. We traveled US 20 West to Shoshone and turned north into the Wind River Canyon. In 
Thermopolis, we got on Route 120 to Cody. Walmart in Cody is by far the most scenic Walmart I ever spent the night at. Route 120 north out of Cody, heading to Red Lodge. The scenery was so spectacular, it almost didn't look real. I do have to admit, as I was approaching the climb up the Beartooth Highway, I was a little apprehensive and nervous. Thoughts of uh, Pinto going up the hill and not making it sliding backwards off the cliff were in my mind. I'm planning for the trip, I read several posts about the Beartooth Highway and traveling with an RV or trailer. Some people said it's not a problem, other people said they wouldn't do it. started my ascent I found the going very easy towing the trailer. The speed limits were anywhere between 35 and 25 which were easily maintained and the, uh, because of the switchbacks there were no steep grades and the turns were very wide. However Donna wasn't quite as relaxed as I was. This elevation, be careful opening up your mustard as Donna demonstrates here. We exited the viewpoint parking lot and continued our climb towards the summit. From here on up, the road became a little bit narrower and a little bit steeper. To the right is 
is the ski lift for the Beartooth Basin Summer Ski Area. As you can see, we were not the only ones towing the camera. After achieving our goal of reaching the summit on the Beartooth Highway, we headed down to look for a campsite. Stopped at the top of the world highway store for some souvenirs, then on to Beartooth Lake Campground. After setting up camp, we went to Clay Butte the Fire Tower for some more spectacular views of the area. here yeah. first time for me yeah. oh, Yellowstone after checking in at the gate we scanned the campsites available and decided to try to make it to Mapa It wasn't long after we entered the park, we had our first bison sighting. thing that you can be sure of in the Lamar and Hayden Valleys is running into a bison jam. Running into the bison jam not only gives you a chance to look, but listen.
alert at all times. You never know when a bison bird is going to cross the road in front of you. We got fuel at the Tower Junction gas station and decided to continue on the Grand Loop Road towards Mammoth to ensure that we got a campsite for the night. As luck would have it, when we pulled into Mammoth Campground, we got the last site. After setting up camp, we headed to the springs and passed by these elk that were in the campground. We explored the boardwalks on the lower part of the springs and then went up to the upper terrace loop drive. We continued on the loop drive. There's a lot of interesting pl places to stop along the way with little pullouts that you can stop and park at. Even though we were visiting in September, there were still some areas that were very busy. After visiting the hot springs, we headed north to Gardner to have a dinner out and get supplies at the grocery store. We had a great pizza and beer at K-Bar. On our way out of town, heading back to the park, we pass through the Roosevelt Arch. We got back to the cozy camper and started planning our next day's adventure. last major eruption of Seabow Geyser was six days prior to our arrival on Donna's birthday. After visiting Norris, we headed to our campsite at Canyon Campground for the next five nights. The woman running the beer rental shop at Canyon Village asked for a photo of the Pinto for her Facebook page. We happily obliged. After visiting Canyon Village, we went to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone to get our first glimpse of the lower falls.
Today we headed north from Canyon Campground towards Tower Falls. It was kind of a yucky day, temperatures in the mid-40s and rain. After checking out the falls in the river, we went up to see the check out the basalt columns. We are now passing by the northern access road to Mount Washburn. As you can see, this area was devastated by fire several years ago. Nature is now restoring it. This area is known as the Mud Cauldron. Several interesting thermal features. Yellowstone is forever changing. This area was once part of the parking lot. Our Alaska friends Ken and Dolly arrived late in the afternoon. After a dinner of Wisconsin brats, we went back in the camper to warm up and plan the next day. After exploring the inside of the Old Faithful Inn, we headed outside to see Old Faithful itself.
after the eruption, we continued on the boardwalk and walked out to the interesting thermal features and geysers uh, that are all behind Old Faithful. Be sure not to miss those. We waited nearly two hours for Grand Geyser to erupt in all its glory. We sure are glad we did. Yep. Our first destination today was to go visit Grand Prismatic Spring, but first the stop at Gibbon Falls. In going to the spring, the best way to view it is to go to the Fairy Falls Trail parking lot and hike the trail, and there's a viewpoint that you can get a panoramic view of the spring from above. The trail is semi-handicapped accessible, as I will demonstrate here. Whoa! I had my swimming suit with me, couldn't pass up a chance to swim in Yellowstone in September. How was it? Oh, great. Fine one to get in. <laughs> oh, I've heard that before. <laughs> A big current going out there or now you can get out where that see where the bubbles are? Yeah. You can get clear out there for but once you get out there just a little bit, it's mainly smooth sandy type of Okay. Yeah, a little chilly, a little refreshing, but had to do it. Woo. 
Any warmer up there or about the same? It's actually, I thought it was a little warmer there. I think yeah. it's even deeper. Yeah. They got a couple nice, nice rocks to sit on. Yeah, too. this isn't bad though. Yeah. If you're in the water, it's not bad. Once you're out, it's cold. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I dry pretty quick. Yeah. I, I didn't bring a towel, so. Oh, no. Well, I think by the time we get to the top of the hill, I'll be dry. Before leaving, we went to Lower Falls to see the sunrise, say goodbye to Ken and Dolly. We exited the park to the south and entered into Grand Teton National Park. Jackson at Eleanor's Bar and Grill, we met up with Sean and Christy of the YouTube channel Long Long Honeymoon. I've watched so many of their videos, it was like meeting old friends. The late day sun provided some interesting shadows. And a beautiful high desert sunset. We left Rock Springs, Wyoming and on I-80 heading east. Julesburg and got back on I-80 East. In passing the Ogallaga exit down, it said, oh, I really wanted to stop there. There are a lot of interesting things to see. We'll have to come back. 15 minutes later, she got her wish.
Fifteen miles past Ogallaga, the front transmission seal failed. Amazingly, within 30 minutes of our call, the tow company showed up. They towed the car and the camper to Sleepy Sunflower RV Park. The next morning, the tow company arranged to have the car repaired at the local Ford dealer. The Ford dealer gave us a loan a car for the day. One of the places we visited was Kingsley Dam in Lake McConaughey, known as Lake Mac. And Boot Hill. We returned to the Ford Deer later in that afternoon, hoping for good news, but unfortunately, the front bushing had taken out the torque converter, and they didn't know when they could get parts. I decided rather than wait around for the parts, we rented a truck and traveled home. Hi, right, well, that was an unfortunate end to the trip, but luckily it happened on our way home. Nobody got hurt. We got to see pretty much everything we had planned to see on the trip, so uh, made it home safely. Uh, within a few weeks, got the car back together. It's running good, ready for the next adventure. Uh, thanks for coming along with us on this trip, and we look forward to having you on our next adventure. Bye. Now a new feature, Donna's Tales from the Road. Hi. We meet a lot of people in our travels just because we're in the Pinto, mm. and we enjoy and appreciate mm. comments like um, one man in the border of Montana saying, I had Hot Wheels like that or another who said, thanks for preserving a piece of history. And then there are those who are like, you're our inspiration. Another person this time said, I love your rig. You're our role model. And I think that's really because of our age, not because of our Pinto, but it's still fun to hear. I collect Pinto stories along the way. There was a woman in Valentine, Nebraska, who told us about her sister. She owned several Pintos. She had a runabout and two wagons, so she would lay the back of the seats down in the wagon, put all our kids back there, and then if they were misbehaving, she'd slam on the brakes, the kids would slide forward, she'd give them a slap, and then keep going. Of course, you couldn't do that this these days, but, you know, back in the day. A man in Douglas, Wyoming, told us that his mom had a 74 Pinto wagon that she bought new in the fall of 73 for her rural mail route. One day the roads got icy and slippery and she slid off a cliff and the flipped end over end over end. She had to buy a new one. This last story is not Pinto related, but I have to share it. It was on our way home and there was a woman working at the register in the gas station. S says, I can't believe how humid it is. And I said, yeah, I'm surprised it could be this humid when we're in the desert. And she said, well, it's a dry humid. And that's it from our Yellowstone trip. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future video updates.